Although we're coming off a horrible road trip, one and five, so it's nice to get back home and get back on the winning track. And obviously the, the game would start with the terrific job that Raul Jacobson did, you know, starting. I mean, giving us, <clears throat> this is his first time on a five-man rotation. So he only had 75 to 80 pitches and he went six innings. We were hoping for five, expecting four, hoping for five, and he gave us six on 75 pitches because our bullpen has, has really been short. Um, so it started with him, and then everybody that followed him just did terrific. I mean, uh, Ty Williams had a real good inning, Atkins, Zangi, and Taylor giving us Taylor Henry giving us two and getting the win. So, you know, it starts with the pitching, which was terrific. I thought the, all, everybody out there had great tempo. You know, fall is here, so I, I think you have more energy on a night like this. And the way that they pounded the strike zone, I think, reflects and how well the defense played. I thought Pius played real well at shortstop. We turned a nice double play. Um, you know, the only run in the first play of the game, um, you know, they scored it an error. It, it was certainly a very tough play for Tiberi with a guy that runs good. But, uh, you know, they turned it into a run, and I'm just glad that we mustered enough offense, not much, but enough to get the win. Um, it was nice to see the two kids that just joined us, Correa, uh, I mean, it was, a, it was a flared single, but it, it counts in the book, and it drove in a key run in the seventh to tie the game. And then we really did have some good at-bats uh, in the 11th. I mean, Jabs has been struggling, and we've been telling him that when he was a 300 hitter at the beginning of the year, he went the other way a lot, and he's just been rolling over on balls. So to get a bullet base hit to left center was good. Rizzi uh, hit the ball hard. Certainly it was playable by the third baseman, but it was a good at bat. And then Domino, the other kid that just joined us, against the lefty hitting a bullet up the middle to win it. That was that was, that was good for to see that for the young know, two kids. And and I'm glad for our team because we had one pitcher left, Castro, and that, that, that we were going to be out of bullets. So that's what we got, and we got uh, done going tomorrow. So whatever questions you got. Played at 11 innings, and uh, you said a lot of times at the beginning of the year that you feel this offense would eventually be better than last year's. But if you're the team's hitting lower this year than they did last year in betting average, so what, what have you seen from the team as far as hitting goes? You know, that's a great question, Mark. Because obviously, through 60, 62 games, 63 games, it is what it is. We're, we're hitting 215. I know that the talent level here is definitely better than a year ago, but it's certainly not reflected in the way the guys hit. I mean, other than Woodman C for most of the year, Alonzo the whole time that we had him, other than those two guys, it just seems like everybody else on the team is underachieving. And the only thing, you know, we've been talking about it a lot on the bus, uh, Sean Ratliff and I, and the only conclusion that we're coming up to is that I did not know, I don't stay on top of the college scene. When I, when I played my college baseball at UC Santa Barbara, you could only play 40 games unless you were in a tournament to get a couple more. But now the colleges are playing 65 and 70 game schedules and now that we've played 63, that's the equivalent of what they're going to experience at Columbia next year. I mean, that's a full season. And so I, you know, we're, we're wondering if fatigue is not a factor, um, because the the instead of the averages going up, the, the more we're getting into the tail end of our season with most of our players, the averages are continuing to tail down, including, you know, Woodman C, who was at 300 and certainly 290 for the bulk of this season, is down into the 250s right now. So I wish I had an answer. I just I know they're better than what they're performing. And, um, you know, the only one that we knew was going to struggle from the very first week was Pius. Because I think, as I've told you guys before, I've, I've never heard of a teaching the way their hitting program is at Coastal Carolina. But according to Pius, they're willing to lead the nation in strikeouts with this collapse the backside and, and try to uppercut the ball and, and to lead the nation in home runs at the expense of the guys that are good enough for pro ball, that would never work. The, the bat just can't catch up to guys that guys like 
Zangi that throw 93, they'll just elevate the fastball to a guy with an uppercut swing and the guy will continue to just keep missing it or pop it up. And as you guys have seen, I've never had a player come into pro ball. Mike Felder was close years ago and, and he got to the big leagues with the Brewers briefly, but he's the only other player I can think of in my whole career that came into pro ball and hit so many balls in the air per at bat. You know, I mean, if you, if you pay attention to Piazza's at bats, in, on any given night, three of the four balls that he hits, it's a it's a fly ball to right, it's a it's a dead fly ball to center, it's a pop up to shortstop. I mean, and and that's going to take probably I told him probably a thousand at bats because um, he's trying to make an adjustment. And today he got he got our only hit there for a while, the line drive base hit to left, but they're few and far between. And he did a line out to third today, so he, he actually had a couple good at bats today. But the rest of them, I, I, I wish I could give you a concrete answer. We're, we're wondering ourselves, you know, um, because we certainly thought we were going to have a lot more offense based on the college stats. <clears throat> but it's been a year for us of pitching and defense and a lot of low-scoring wins like this. But this is our first extra inning game in a long, long time. Knock on wood because we don't want to have another one tomorrow. But I think we've gone five or six weeks. We had a plethora of them the first 10 days of the season, and now it's been a while. So, What have you thought of uh, Carpio and Domino and Correa in the uh, short time you've had them? Well, Carpio is one of our better prospects. And, you know, the, the fans here are only going to get a glimpse of him because he, he can do everything on the baseball field. He was real fun to watch a year ago in extended spring and certainly would have been with us the whole season this year, but he had a shoulder operation. And so he's ahead of schedule, the fact that he's DHing. Um, he got like 25 at-bats down in the GCL, and because he is one of our better prospects, they wanted to get him into night baseball and hopefully get him close to 50 at-bats here. So he's going to DH 12 of these last 15 games. He's not throwing a ball at all. He is a very, very good shortstop. Um, I mean, I'm not going to put him quite with Fresario, but more more to that range than anybody else we got. I mean, he he can run, he can throw, he's very athletic, uh, and he can drive a baseball. But he has not played a night game in a whole year, and so he looked. You know, he had four horrible at bats yesterday because in the GCL they just play at noon. And tonight, the first couple of bats weren't much, but the third one. That ball he drove to right center into the wind, that's a glimpse of what, what he can do. Um, uh, Franklin Correa is really uh, defensively is ready for this league with the bat. He's not close to being ready here. Um, you know, he got the flared base hit tonight, which drove in a huge run, but we're not expecting any offense out of him. He's, he's not here so much on merit as we needed somebody like tonight to give Woodman C a rest. Uh, and Thursday, Pi is a day of rest. We didn't have anybody that can play in the middle. And Franklin is very adept defensively. We expect him to play well defensively. He did tonight. Any any offense we get out of him will be a plus. Now, Domino is here on merit. He hit 340 at Kingsport as a catcher, first baseman, DH, left-handed hitter. And um, he's so-so on defense. But what Domino brings is a solid bat. He, he doesn't give an inch against left-handers as he showed on his game-winning hit. He puts the ball in play. He darn near drove a ball off the left field wall early in the game that was caught. And so he gives you quality at bats and he's got a very good makeup and he's all about team. So he's going to fit in very nicely and play against righties and then uh, Knight will play against the left-handers. In the last two games, Raul Jacobson has been really Tremendous on those victories tonight. Went six innings. The last game in Sat Island, four innings out of the bullpen. What has he been doing differently since he's come back from Columbia? Obviously, Columbia got shelled in those two starts. Well, that's a good question, Gershon. And the and the answer, and we had a we had a meet pitchers meeting strictly about Raul. Raul should have never come back here once it, once he left. He pitched very good here, but when he got to Columbia, he made the mistake that a lot of pitchers make of giving the league more credit than it deserved because it's full season A ball. And he went right out from the first inning trying to trick hitters, 
picking for spots and therefore pitched 1-0, 2-0, and 3-1 and got hammered. And as we told them, you know, the plate's 17 inches here, it's the same size there. You know, you, you, you outmaneuvered yourself mentally by not pitching the way you... We didn't promote you to fail. But when you got there, your, your, his success is what you saw tonight, having 10 pitch innings, you know, by pounding the strike zone and the hitters that are looking for a fastball to hit, before they know it, they're 0-2 or 1-2 because he'll drop a breaking ball, a changeup over the plate, and sometimes pitch backwards, meaning then use his power sinker late in the count. And, and then when he's got them looking off speed, then he'll use his sinker early in the count and get them out soft later. But his whole game is pitching ahead. And in his two horrible starts at Columbia, he pitched behind the count all the time. And with men on base, eventually you got to throw it over the plate and he got hammered. So he didn't give himself a chance. And to Krismat's, Krismat pitches very similar to him. When Krismat went there just for one start, Krismat was smart enough to pitch the same way there and basically took Raul's job. Raul's the one that came back and Krismat stayed. You know, but but the, the plus is he will definitely learn from it. You know, I mean he sees the error of his ways, and um, you know we're glad to have him. But the next time I said, don't come back <laughs> when you go up. What'd you think of uh, the Mahoney Valley starter uh, Shane Bieber, the uh, USC Santa Barbara player? Uh, where I went to school, and not because we're a fellow Gauchos, but after the first inning, I made a comment to Phil Regan and Billy Brick that, in my opinion. That's the best pitching prospect that we faced the whole year. That, that his delivery was so solid in terms of mechanics. He's got a great pitcher's body. I love that he's downhill playing on everything. He knows what he's doing, and his when you have a repeatable delivery, it's easy to spot the ball. And then when I went over and looked at his stats, and, and granted he hasn't pitched that many innings here. But his control was impeccable, which which it was which it reflects in his delivery. So for me, we only got to see three innings, and I'm glad it was only three because I don't think we were going to do anything with him. Um, but but that would be my vote for number one pitching prospect of what I've seen. This may have been discussed in the past, but what are you and your coaching staff doing to keep the pitchers fresh? And I know you're talking about. Uh people feeling exhausted or, mm -hmm. you know, feeling tired. So what are you and your coaching staff doing for the pitchers to keep their arms fresh? And keep them well, the, the pitchers, unlike the hitters who are playing every day, our pitchers are fresh because Ron, Ron Romanic, our pitching coordinator, has a lot of them on on pitching limits. Like, like Williams, for example, is coming off arm surgery, so he can only pitch an inning when he pitches. Um, Atkins... He's been pretty much uh, a one-in, because he pitched a lot in college, they've limited him to an inning. Just recently, they've let us expand it to two. Uh, Justin Dunn, who's going to start tomorrow, even if it's three perfect innings, they've confined him to three because they want the season total to be, I, I believe it's like under 30. So our pitchers are fresh. Um, we just don't have quite enough of them. Um, in, in the bullpen, we've been burned out a little bit of late, and going 11 innings tonight certainly doesn't help. So, um, And know, knowing that we're only getting three out of our starter tomorrow, that means that's six innings that we have to piece together. Um, and the Mets certainly don't like anybody pitching three days in a row, and we've got two guys in the bullpen, three, that have now pitched two days in a row, so that eliminates them for tomorrow. So um, we'll piece it together as best we can, but we, we can't go extra innings tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry. Is that one of the interesting things for you as a manager at this level that you have to balance what the team wants and you know trying to get wins and stuff like that right. in terms of pitching and prospects and stuff like that? Yeah, but the but it, it balances itself in the sense that on a normal pitching staff, uh, like when when you know when I'm when I would manage double or triple A, you've generally got twelve pitchers on your staff. You know if you're lucky, thirteen. But but because there's innings restrictions down here. Most of the season, we've carried 16 pitchers, so you got three extra to, to 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 take care of those extra innings that you need when certain guys are, are limited on their pitching. So, and 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 actually, there have been a couple times, not this year, but in the past, by my first two years here, we had as many as 19 pitchers, which then it was tough to get them all work. You know, play six hours yesterday. That must have been uh, something to watch for you. 
Yeah, but you know, as I, I talked to Kevin Mahoney, you know, our defense has been so good this year, mm -hmm. um, and and, I, and I'm not one to ever make any excuses. And the field at Lowell, uh, you know, obviously it's not turf; it's regular uh, grass and dirt. It was fine uh, Saturday and Sunday, but Monday night's game, for whatever reason, um, three of the errors that were attributed to our players definitely took bad hops and I thought was unfortunate that our guys were given errors. Two of them to Woodmansey. I mean, Woodmansey set up on two balls in the last hop. One came up and hit him right in the chest and maybe from the scorer's thing he thought Woodmansey just missed it, but we've all seen him play 60 some odd games. He don't miss ground balls. And it got so bad that late in the game he actually got gun shy on a, a hard hit ball right and I would too. I don't want to get hit in the face. He got gun shy and he caught it, but he didn't look pretty catching it because he was expecting another bad hop. And Pius got one, you know. So, but but three still is not our team. But mm -hmm. like I said, we were charged with six, but I'd put an asterisk on three of them. I mean, it's a very in the first inning, right? Uh, on the ball that went down that he uh, that talk, yeah. talk about tonight. tonight yeah. yeah. Well, I, I asked the scorer. The scorer looked at that several times, and he, he felt that at the time to very touch the ball. When he stopped the replay, the runner was only halfway to first base. So, um, I mean, I'm glad that Raul wasn't charged with an earned run, but from the dugout and not the benefit of replay, seeing how fast Isaacs was and how much ground. Did you see him on the on the ball that, that got by the right fielder that uh, Carpio hit with the diving attempt? That was the center fielder. We thought immediately it was going to be a triple when it got by the right fielder. They actually had a play on Carpio at second base because Isaacs was right there to, to back up the play. You don't see that much. So knowing his speed and the fact that Tiberi was trying to barehand a moving ball, uh, you know, if I was a scorer, I certainly would have given it a base hit and it would have been an earned run and we would have had an airless game tonight. But, uh, you know, like I say, the, scare, the scorer saw it differently and he had the benefit of replay. That the guy he didn't think the guy was as far down the line as what it appeared to me. So, how does a puppy was pushed back in the starting rotation ending up there on his stems? I know we all would all love to see him throw again, but he's seeing a doctor tomorrow. Unfortunately, with the long bus trip that we had back and forth, he's still having some back spasms off and on. So I I, I can tell you he's a definite scratch again for this week. He's ticketed to go to the Instructional League, and I think maybe we'll know tomorrow after he sees a back specialist at 11 o'clock.